Welcome to lecture number four. This is Dr. Robert O. Let me share the screen with you and then start with prayer as we always do. So Father God, we dedicate this lecture number four to you. We don't want it to be just transferring of information. Let it be time of inspiration on top of information that will become impartation, Lord. Let it be revelatory. We would like to realize some nuggets of truth that will be applicable to our mission work in Jesus' name. I pray that my sharing of my heart and my ministry, uh, especially through the Central Peace Orphanage, will help you personally. Amen. Well, talk soon. Well, uh, last lecture, uh, primarily I talked about two aspects of uh, me as cup or patron as a sponsor uh, and the both positive and negative aspect of that uh, and then cup as a father patron as a father uh, unlike uh, ted and cbc went through because he started out as a father sponsor and then uh, a partner uh, so he started as a father, sponsor, and then um, eventually move on to partner, right? But I have five steps. Not tripartite role, but this is five. I started out as a sponsor. It was very impersonal, but, but then I moved in with them. Now I became a father, so which is kind of different. So every circumstance is different. And, and you cannot demand the same kind of things from every situation. So uh, it's a little different. And uh, now I'm gonna talk about how I then moved out of being the father because uh, our three year term of living together ended. And so now I am at a different stage. As a sponsor, my role changed, it, not by my choice, uh, because it was the transition of the government. 2016, according to their report, not mine, according to COP report, children mandated to be sent back to their villages. Many changes at Center of Peace, May 11, 2016. Big changes are affecting COP in that government is mandating that all the younger children, five to 12, which was a majority of the COP, to be sent back to relatives. They will be returning to less than harmonious situation and where we know for sure they will not be sent to school, used as a child labor around the house or farming or collecting recyclables. COP can keep them. Wow. Uh, I told you already, it was mm -hmm. quite unfortunate, a well-meaning uh, Christian lady who researched, and her conclusion was all the orphans will be better off living with their loving, caring relatives. I mean, if that's the truth, oh yeah, her research was legit. But what's the reality? What Brian Meyer actually, and Popar is arguing there, right? Children are not gonna go to school. They don't care, <laughs> you know. Uh, some of the real orphans uh, living under uncle's house, aunt's house, they'll just become a manual labor in the farm. Until this point, every kid who graduated from COP who got into college, we as a patron pay for it, four years of college. They were well-fed, fully educated, and they have hope of going to college. And we have an example after example after example doing that. But no, uh, the one lady's research and somehow got into UN and the UN start giving tons of money to government to execute their plan, hope, thinking that they're helping the, the developing country. Very tragic. 
and then what happened was that also uh, circumstances are changing in COP. Bopar married American missionary and she becomes American citizen. Uh, and my students at House of Peace now graduating college and they have to go to the next phase, education. So we end up sending them to YON base. Uh, both of them, I think two years, you know, you could have one year program or two years. And it's very costly. <laughs> yeah, but we sponsor them. So now we enter into the next third phase, not start out as a sponsor father. And now this is a second phase of COP as a sponsor of HOP members again. So both COP and HOP. Now I became a sponsor of both COP and HOP at a different level. Now positive of becoming the HOP sponsor again. What was the positive? Well, there are a lot. Uh, once again, intimate relationship based on sponsorship example, knowing the real need, right? Knowing, I mean, we begin to understand, I mean, to a point of, cause you know, not, not through me. <laughs> I don't really uh, associate with them that intimate level, but my wife, she's a counselor. You know, of course she'll talk and share. I mean, honestly, and you know, she tells me what kind of family background, what kind of problem and also living with them and realize that, you know, even uh, the issues with uh, COP leadership and oh my goodness, the financial crisis and problem and, and we have a, a non-Christian living with them. So we intentionally brought a couple non-Christian into our, and then it changed the dynamics and how I'm going to deal with that. And, and some of them really got upset and left the group. I mean, I'm not saying all that we've done is was perfect. No, it was a lot of drama time and, you know, like, because of the nepotism at work. And so the relatives of the leadership start having financial uh, crisis. Uh, there are like all kinds of abuse, financial abuse, I, you name it, we had it. But ultimately the positive thing that we come out was that because it was intimate, if we did not meet once a week at a college department revival meeting. We did not meet once a week at Sunday school. We did not meet once a week at church service. Then you could put a mask. You could act like spiritual. But no, when you live together, you have the intimate relationship. And knowing the real need. You know, like to a point where, okay, I know her. But her weakness is this. Her strength is this. Her strength is love the Lord, wants to serve, have appetite for education. But her weakness is that She's going through some form of PTSD, you know, post-traumatic syndrome, and she's lying. She's, she lies and she doesn't know she's lying. She's so compulsive liar. And, and these are the kind of stuff that we uh, unearth, we dig it up so that we could really help her. Uh, Long-term investment and personal growth. So now we begin to make, not just invest in, a, you know, Uniform, okay, it will cost $1,000 for him to go to school for a year, but is it worth it? Yes. Well, let's do this, right? Long-term investment on the personal. So everything is individual. We don't spend 1000 on every kid. Some kids, they don't want to serve the Lord. They want to do their own thing. You know, leave me alone. Let me go and become a mechanic. You know, I want to just fix motorcycle rest of my life. Don't bother me. We bless them, send them out, you know. We don't harass them. We don't dictate. We don't tell them that, oh, no, some guy was have everything provided for. He could go to college. He said, I don't want it. I just want to go village and become a farmer. Hey, Lord bless you. We send them up. It's a personal growth. But some kid wants to, I want to go to YWAM, get education. Well, he cannot do it on his own. It's a thousand dollar investment. And the intimate knowledge of individual, that's the key. Right? Why do you think Jesus had 10,000 followers, but he only had 12? And out of that three, out of that one, intimate. That's the reason. You go and do the same, Jesus said. What's the negative? The financial burden increased, like you don't believe. 
right? So as a patron, I am responsible, right? I am responsible to gather the funding. The, I mean, patron's key function is a funder, right? And I never forget that. And the flip side of knowing them individually, the issues became too personal. I know them too well. And sometimes there's a limitation. So it's good and bad, but if you know them too well, like for example, if you know their uh, sin of lying, and then when you teach and preach about the sin of lying, that they will take it personally. Is the pastor all talking about me? How come he talks about me all the time? So sometimes there's that power distance is important. You know, you don't, if you want to be a symbolic head of the group, then don't counsel them intimately. Have your wife counsel so that, that you have the power distance. Power distance is that you know, Jesus knew few intimately, three intimately, but he's 70. Benefit of doubt. The people are listening to his teaching say, okay, he's preaching to general term, not to me personally. But the negative side of knowing living together was that it should became too personal. Also, uh, long-term dependency may have set in. Okay, live with them for three years. He said, okay, well, Pastor O is gonna provide for me, marry me, provide for my children. Oh, he has become my patron, a great patron. You know, Bob the provider, right? He's my cop. I mean, he's my God. Well, watch out. Don't have messianic complex, okay? Huge problem. So Ur, as a sponsor, the HOP members, well, positive was that, well, now they could make long-term plan, right? To a point where I want to develop myself as a Christian worker. I would like to go to YWAM. Of course, I mean... <laughs> He had no future like that. If without patron, he said, no, my parents want me to work at factory, make 160 and ask me to pay $80 for that. I mean, that was the kind of a norm, which was kind of, was kind of, I could, under, I could understand the dynamic. How could a parents who sent a kid to orphanage and they didn't pay a dime for next, you know, 20, 10 years, or 15 years, 14 years, as soon as the kids start working at a factory and makes 160, they demand $80. Some people, some mom to pay up my gambling debt. Unbelievable. So the kid who really had no future, no hope, now positive aspect is that, well, I have a patron, I have my cop, who was willing to invest my long-term plan. So making long-term plan became possible. And then personal relationship with cop, patron again. Right, it was a sponsor, right? And now I am cop, has I sort of like my father and, 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 and became a sponsor again, the individualistic and brought stability. Now I could think long-term, I don't have to worry about it. And to a point where, you know, one of these guys start actually start purchasing land. He bought $3,000 land, because, you know, uh, we were mentoring them and, praying with them and he realized, hey, I, I could buy a land now. This is pretty positive. What's the negative side of that? Definitely long-term dependency already may have said in, in their mind to treating cop not as a patron, but as God, their Messiah. The messianic complex is a term that a uh, missionary, especially working in a developing world has to be careful. You're not Messiah, Jesus is. Don't try to save everybody, okay? If you have a strong gift of mercy, be careful. Don't let it go wild. <laughs> you try to be their Messiah. <laughs> and God's gonna strike you. God's gonna break the relationship. Uh, yeah, it's a very huge problem. Okay? We have uh, small messiahs running around all over the world acting like Jesus, when they are just representation of Jesus. Repent. And there's a false sense of identity, like, oh, okay, now I belong, right? Oh, he's my father, right? False expectation on God. Oh, can you be my father? No, I will not be your father. I'm not your father. I'm just your God. I'm not your God. 
or your father. I cannot be father 20, 30, 100 people. You know how many people I support? You know how many kids in the orphanage? And every kid wants me to become their father. I said, no. And one, actually one, several came to me personally, set me down and said, can you be my father? Can I call you father? I said, no, please don't call me father. Please. I'll never be your father because you're going to call me dad and then expect me to provide for you the rest of your life. I'm not saying that that was their motive. They just don't even know why they are wanting that. It's very strong in Africa too. You know, when I travel through Africa, they immediately say, can I call you spiritual father? I said, we just met. <laughs> you just heard me preach once. How can I be your spiritual father? Yeah, and they immediately, they expect you to pay for their children's education. Why? Because you're a spiritual father, right? Yeah. Actually, I uh, saw it at work. And, and, and I mean, this is kind of shameful e example. I've been in Cambodia 20 years, about 15 years ago. No, 18 years ago. I was in a bus full of people in Cambodia, going from Kampong Cham to Phnom Penh. And there was well-meaning Korean guy. Uh, I mean, he's some kind of doctor, but very loud and, you know, his character had issues. He's very narcissistic. He's like, ah, oh, it's all about me. Oh, talk loud and jolly and happy. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with being happy and jolly. But we're in full of Cambodian people going from Kampong Cham to Phnom Penh. First time in Cambodia, this Korean guy from America. He's a medical doctor. Very talk loud and talking to everybody. I mean, sharing Christ. I mean, there's nothing wrong with sharing Christ, but it's like, you know, believe in Jesus. And there was a couple monks, right? The young monks who spoke a little bit of English. And he says, ah, believe in Jesus. And you, you become child of God and we become brothers. There's nothing wrong with that. That's a gospel. So I said, amen. But can you kind of tone it down? Don't bring attention to yourself. Share Christ, not yourself. See, a lot of times, I am the greatest evangelist has become their gospel, not Jesus is great. I want to be great servant of God. No, I'm a servant of great God. That should be the focus. But it was like, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and he said, well, you monks, if you believe in Jesus, then you become my brother. And they say, oh, no, you're too old to be my brother. Then you become my spiritual son. Huge mistake. Then they said, oh, good. Then can you provide for me? If you're my, if you're my spiritual father, can, you need to provide for me. Can you pay for my education? Can you pay for Right on the spot. Ten minutes into our conversation. And these monks were laughing. They're jeering. Not cheering. You know what jeering is? Making fun of this shallow Christian evangelist. I felt so bad. The funny thing is that Dr. Guy still till this day brag about how he has a spiritual children in Cambodia. Matter of fact, we stopped the bus in the middle of the road and he treat everybody to cook one coconut. whoop de doo Dollar coconut. He spent twenty dollars. Everybody in the minibus, and he probably brag about it. But it's kind of shameful how we belittle gospel that way, right? Uh, because we are going to. If if I'm gonna now, not just the you know hour and thirty minute ride to Kampong Cham to Phnom Penh. Can you imagine li me living with them for three years? What kind of false expectation on me? was imposed by orphans who live with me. Of course, they're going to treat me like God and Father, and he's going to take care of me the rest of my life. That's negative aspect. That's not where you want to end up. You want them to depend on God, and you are just a mediator. But it kind of that line is blur gets blurred. That's the negative aspect. Because the personal and enduring reciprocity is there. That's for sure, right? And it's very personal. 
It's good and bad. What about COP? Now, COP moved out and has become a small group. The Kakada, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 13, 14. But some of them are actually neighborhood kids come to uh, on Sunday. So less than 10. Okay, so my role as a cop uh, and running as a COP sponsor, because I still provide for them certain, certain aspect, not a not whole lot. But now, thank God, you know, we don't have to have like $500 worth of rice each month. Why? Because how many, like seven, eight kids eat, right? So, I mean, it's like 10%. So positive aspect was that less time commitment. I don't really have to spend major time, you know, raising funds or even engage. It's like I was preaching there so maybe a couple of times, three, four times a year I was preaching. Less financial burden, okay? rice for 82 people versus that's not even 15, you know, seven, eight. More personal relationship. Now, even at this, you know, when you walk into a room full of 82 orphans, then you get overwhelmed. You don't know who's who. But I mean, now I know. Get, you know, so Chad, oh, okay, has a problem. This is the issue. Oh, yeah, we ministered to him this way because he had abused his father, stepfather. And, you know, so I get to know them personally. So that was the positive aspect of that. What was the negative? Well, it becomes less priority. So I don't really spend time. I don't spend time in prayer. You know, I spend less time fundraising, right? So guess what? The funding also ending due to deduction in size. Even the funders, my, my patron side, oh, okay, Pastor O, you know, we support you 100 a month, 200 a month, you know, 50 a month for the rice funding for COP world. You're saying that now there's less than 10? Why should we give you 200 a month? How much rice can they eat, little kids? So actually the funding decreased substantially, especially after they found out that, well, Bopar married the American missionary. Bam, you know, like 30% uh, left. They say, well, we don't want to support anymore. Why? She should be supported by her husband. He's American, right? Singaporean, Hong Kong, you know, you know, Korea is there, you know, because two Singaporean Hong Kong and two Koreans in Korea, like, wow, well, you know, America is symbolism of prosperity. So if she married American, then she should be helped by American husband. Well, that's not the case because he was not really the funding uh, type. Okay. What about Ul? What about COP Kids as a sponsoree? What was the positive? Oh, well, I got secure housing again. You know, and actually the smaller group, more personal care, that was great. Okay, a learning opportunity. Now, uh, the Bopar was focusing more, but, but by this time, Bopar was actually going Mondorkiri quite often. Now she lives in Mondorkiri, period. But in, in those times, she's transitioning out and she really want to make her mission work more financially independent. She borrowed tens of thousands from Australia. So all this is happening. And, and they move three times. And so it's going through a difficult time. But at least the housing is secure in, from their perspective, from Bopar's perspective, because we pay for it. And then, but the negative aspect is not a personal relationship because she's away to Mandurkiri. I'm in Phnom Penh. I only come six months a year now. She's away. Very difficult. I don't, we don't no longer have a, 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 a monthly meeting or no longer she writes a report to me. Why? What's the point, right? The amount is so small that I cannot really demand. And actually I did that at the beginning stage so, so that she could learn how to use Excel sheet. And, you know, we sent her to MBA programs, all that, but no, no need. Because our scope of engagement was very narrow. It used to be, you know, electricity bill, water bill, rice bill, you know, at birthday celebration and, you know, special meal and uniform and, you know, vitamin and, you know, dewarming pills. I mean, into medical condition, we hired our nurse. No, all that is disappeared. It's now just, you know, very simple. So no long-term plan can be made. Why? Because we don't know. They don't know. They're going to disappear. They don't know government's going to shut the whole thing down. They're transitioning from Central Peace Orphanage 
now to Central Peace Homestay. Now it's House of Peace Homestay. Now they don't even want to call it because they lost legal standing, blah, 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 on and on and on. Okay. Uh, so on that part, it was more voluntary. Duration of bond was questioned. Is it going to be long-term, short-term? We didn't know. Uh, then we enter into the mentor stage. Now, this is a different stage. No longer that, but because, why is it so hot in here? Oh. Now we enter cop as a mentor. Now that's a different stage. Uh, what is mentor? Like a coach, teacher, uh, it's a little more involved than the group at a public school. The guru would have 80 students. How do you mentor 80 students? You can't mentor 80 students. Jesus had multitude and he never gave himself to that, but he gave himself to at least 12. He mentored 12. So for example, we, I start entering the mentoring relationship with brother and he joins uh, OSS house as OSS house staff, worked two years. So we saw him as an orphan. We sent him through college. We sent him through two years of YWAM, two years as uh, uh, OSS house staff. And now, six months ago, uh, he now joins uh, uh, the uh, company, gets quite well salary, and uh, now became a father. So he met her at YWAM and now met up six month old boy. And we were part of the uh, Jenny's birthday celebration. And wow, it was wonderful. So yeah, uh, it's more a personal mentoring. So what, how is it different? Mentoring is that we really do a long-term uh, relationship. Uh, and as a mentor, I'm just working with my air conditioner, something died. Um, long-term relationship is set through life stages. What do I mean by that? Uh, now I know Brother N as an orphan, college student, YM missionary, now a worker at a huge, huge company and well-to-do and he bought the land. Now he's in the process of buying a house. Now every stage, now I could personally mentor. We just talk and say, you know, we, we need to meet separately from the girls, you and several of the guys. So I'm gonna meet a, a guys only. Uh, and I think there's something about Jesus only mentoring men as a man. Uh, my wife mentors woman, and I don't want to engage in different sex, different gender mentoring. Okay, so I'm a man, I'll be tempted. So uh, my principle for last 37 years of my marriage is I will not counsel, I will not meet a woman one on one ever. You know, it's just like, that's the rule. And I think that's a very good rule. Uh, don't mess with someone, some other gender their private life and then you know hold their hands in a private room praying for them don't do that because you're not that spiritual you're not going to think about spiritual stuff you're going to think about sexual stuff as a man so don't counsel a woman in a private room holding their hands okay because <laughs> you're not that spiritual uh, that's why jesus actually had 12 men as disciples so i'm cultivating a mentorship group that will be exclusively men and if their wives or woman needs to be mentoring, I refer to my wife, Jenny. So long-term relationship is set through life stages. Now I'm gonna talk about uh, issue as a husband, uh, those things personal, but keep the power distance. So positive thing about mentoring, not as a father. See, father is too close, but now I could detach. There's a power distance. Power distance is like, there's a role that I play, that I'm playing a role as a mentor. It's very defined. You know, they're not going to say, how come you don't meet me every day? I'm like, why would I meet you every day? I'm not your father. 
Even father doesn't meet you every day. So they don't have that false expectation. We'll set the day, hey, can we meet once every two months, like every 60 days, can we have a Zoom meeting? Hey, if you need, but if you need any kind of personal counseling, call me, I'm available to you. I'm not available to everybody who wants to see me, but to you, we have special mentor and mentee relationship. But power distance is there. And so I don't have to spend 24 seven with them. I don't have to play badminton with them. I don't have to share meals with them every day. No, it's just less time is, but that's the positive thing, right? Uh, negative aspect was that have to deal with more number of people. Yeah. Uh, so now as a mentor that I have a mentee in Germany, in Korea, LA, Chicago, Georgia, Atlanta, Cambodia, Phnom Penh, you know what I mean? So I could have, see, I'm real. So then I have more number of uh, mentees. That's the kind of uh, management I had to do, deal with. A relationship can become less intimate. And that's actually also negative, but also positive. You don't want to keep it too intimate. But it's in, from the, my perspective that I don't really, 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 really know that personally. Uh, and time is not available all the time because you know, I'm meeting a lot of people. But what about Earl as a mentee? What is their take on this different kind of role? Long-term relationship is assured. Yeah, okay. At this rate, you know, I could meet them 10 years from now. You know, I, I've been mentoring people for 10, 15 years. Some people, 30 years. Yeah. So it's gonna be long-term. I believe that if God gives you a relationship, it is lifetime. There are three categories. There are people you meet for a reason, you meet for a season, and meet for life. There are people who you meet for a reason, it's like, oh, I have a pastor of a church, I have you know, five churches, maybe thousand plus people, but it's for the season, me as a pastor, and I don't see them, and they don't get qualms about it, they don't get upset at it. But there's a, there's a reason. Season, like when I was going through college, I met a lot of college buddies. Went through grad school, I met, when I was pastoring, I met a lot of pastors. I'm a missionary, I'm meeting a lot of missionaries. There is a season of my life that I'm doing. Now I'm a professor now, I'm meeting a lot of professors. But not all of them are gonna go a lifetime with me. But there are people that I meet for a lifetime. Even people I met in college, people I met in junior high, I had 48 years of lifetime. You know, which I'm going to actually have try to have lunch with them today after 48 years of friendship. So that's lifer. It's called lifer. College, also lifer. Grad school, fuller life. You know, so now as a mentee, wow, Pastor O has a track record of friendship for 48 years, surely. So that's a pretty good positive thing. Long term relationship is assured, meaning that is as long as you're not, you're faithful. If unless God tells you otherwise, the relationship is rock solid. That's good. Consulting and counseling opportunities are available. So anytime I have crisis, Pastor O, I'm trying to buy a house, but I don't know how this thing works. What can I do? Good. I'll tell you because I have several experience of purchasing. So it can be very personal and it is available to you. And relational security, meaning that I am, you know, for this person, brother N, he has had, he had access to me for 14 years, right? And he's very secure that Pastor is not going to abandon me like my family or my stepfather who always, you know, took advantage of me. He never took advantage of me, right? It's always blessing, securing. When child was born, we want to make sure that the child will have educational funds. So we support him and he start our account. And we're going to invest every month, every year, so that the child, when they grow up to be 18 and go to college, have enough funding to go to college. And he now we're, we're now uh, mentoring him how to be a father, responsible father, right? So now he, he has opened up an account. He's going to invest in that account himself. So that when 18 years of investment, when the boy becomes, mentee becomes 18, wow. Okay, negative aspect of that is one. Less intimate relationship than prior relationship as a child. Of course, there'll be no longer father and son. That's okay, it's actually positive, but also negative. 
intimacy is lost. The time limitation of the mentor due to his commitment with many, because I had many mentees, not, I could only father three, four, but I could, I could have up to 12 or more mentees. So less time limitation. False sense of identity may occur. So uh, good thing is that I feel uh, relationally secure so that I, I don't have to do anything. He will always be my mentor. That's not true. Relation is reciprocal. It's give and take. If you don't give your time, you're not going to receive. That's the part, guys. You know, people say, Pastor O, how do you have good relationship with your leader? Invest time, invest money, love them, care for them, let them know that you care. You know, my, I have a spiritual father, Pastor Sam, he's like 85 now. Every Father's Day, I send him gifts. Every birthday send him gift, you know, for, I don't know, last 15, 30, maybe 10 years, 12 years. Every time I visit, every time I call, I visit, I did a motorcycle tour, Seattle, I spent a couple of days at his house and praying for him. I know his family intimately. I know his oldest children's affair. And I mean, he disclosed his heart with me and we have this heart to heart talk. And I am making effort as mentee as much as mentors invest in his time. It's always give and take. Don't take it anything for granted, right? Very important. In this relationship, the scope of exchange has changed. It's much less. The density of cover is also changed. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go back. So uh, my point is, patron-client dynamic is happening. And now we could identify which aspect of patron client is taking place. Okay, then I need to move into cop as partner, which I have not yet. Okay, this is something that maybe because my mentees are too young still, maybe it may happen 10 years from now. Okay, but it has happened between me and Bopar. So brother N, he's too young, too immature. I'm still mentoring stage. But with Bopar, we fully engage in partnership, which I'm so happy about. There's a book, Kap Ka Ure Nara, Kap and Ur Nation. Jun Nam, Jun Man Kang, Kang Jun Man, points out that Korea is facing difficult Kap and Ur problem because conglomerates as franchisers oppress franchisee to maximize COP's immediate profit, but ultimately face the downfall of their industries. He poses the question, is true partnership between COP and Earth possible? So here I am raising the same question. Is true partnership between Korean missionaries and Cambodian Christians possible when they are COP and Earth? respectively. You see what I'm saying? Uh, is it possible? Is Kappenel possible? I mean, is partnership between Kappenel possible? That's my question. Mata Hoshef, what say you? What do you think? Absolutely. <laughs> It's not yet for, maybe I should do another one uh, with Bopar, but not yet between me and the younger children. Now there will be the full circle, but with Bopar, it is. Not yet in the future, but in the future for the mentees now, there's several of them, but at least for one, Bopar, it is possible. What's the positive? Is equality as Tonga. There's no more financial responsibility. I, I no longer, uh, other than the projects, I no longer pay monthly for Bopar's Life, Bopar's Center, Bopar's Pepper Farm. No, there's no monthly commitment. Zero. Because why? We're Tonga. We're the same cop. She's a cop. I'm God. She's an American citizen, married to American missionary, has her life. She's going Mondorkiri, starting a pepper farm. I had my opinion about her pepper farm, but I couldn't say it. why, because that's hers. I'm not paying for it. I should just be quiet. 
<laughs> yeah. I, I, I really didn't want her to do that, but I said, well, I, I have no right to stop you from whatever God called you to do, which was pepper farm. I, I was really not for it because I knew that it's not going to be profitable. But she's a nature woman. She loves the nature and she does well. So I said, more power to you. Who am I to tell you? I cannot tell you what to do. I am not your father or your older brother at this point. Now we're a partner. There's a certain guidelines. There's a boundaries. There are things I could say, things I cannot and should not say. Okay. When you do not know the boundaries, then you get into trouble. Anyway, so there's an intimacy as Tonga, authentic relationship. Now we could in the equal ground. It's no longer an asymmetrical, we're reaching the horizontal, not vertical, horizontal relation. We see eye to eye. You could talk back to me. I could talk to you as a friend now. It's not boss. We're not higher and low. We're equal, equality. We're face to face, eye to eye. We, I talk to you. You know, Ratana Kitty Pepper Farm, I don't know if that's going to work, but hey, but that's your call. You want to borrow 20000 from Australia? That's your call. You know, honestly, I don't think it's going to work, but hey, you see, we're equal. What's the negative aspect of that? Well, we're losing the father and child relationship, but it doesn't mean that we know. So it's just like when a son becomes millionaire, the son says, you're no longer my father. Of course not. The relationship is intact, but that tightness is lost. No direct influence, both good and bad. You know, like I said, if I was paying for everything and, uh, you know, at the beginning stage of sponsorship and Bopar said, I'm going to chuck everything. I'm going to borrow 20,000 and start a pepper farm in Mondorkiri, you know, 2007, I'll say, no, I will not support that. See, I don't have any direct influence anymore. Why? Because that's her choice. So that's, could be negative. So, but in terms of the, the younger children that's growing, now they're basically just entering the mentee stage, that partnership is unknown. From the equality, I mean, from the uh, as a partner, because it's not yet for like brother N, he doesn't know. Positive though, I could say, eventually it will be equality, it will be Tonga. That's a good thing. Because I don't want that guy, like, like my son, my son will become 34 in next week. He will, my son will become 34 next week. And my first daughter is 36 already. I do not tell them what to do. I mean, they're 34. I cannot, I mean, our father and son, father and daughter relationship is intact. But I no longer says, you do this. You go to church Sunday. I cannot do that. Right? That's not my prerogative. That's not my, I cannot demand that kind of from equal individual. She's an adult, 36, 34, 31. Follow Jesus, love Jesus. That's father's desire. How they respond is their call, right? And you're not responsible in a sense, you know. Was David punished because of what happened to So the, the, the children's sin, you'll not be punished because of your children's sin. Or children punished for father's sin. Right? The Absalom was not punished because King David raped Bathsheba and killed Uriah. Absalom, because your father raped the woman, you are being punished. No. Absalom was punished for the sin that he committed by raping his stepmothers on the public. And David was punished for raping Bathsheba in private. Father and son both punished for their sin. And King David was praised, he's a man after my own heart, for the good that he has done. So it's like that. So don't try to be responsible. But no, treat them as equal. It will reach that partnership, authentic relation. Now that that is authentic, you have no power to say whatever. So, I mean, if in this vertical relationship, you, you don't really have authentic, it's always going to be asymmetrical relationship. And then when it becomes that, that is very genuine. That you could say, no, I don't want to, I don't need to, but I still volunteer. 
So the equality, uh, negative aspect is equal responsibility, has to raise your own fund. <laughs> you know, Bopar had to raise her own fund. I don't support her anymore. And that's good, you know, good thing, but also, well, you need to be responsible. For it could be negative. Self responsibility, you are on your own. You cannot hide away from. Well, that's what my father told me to do. So, you know, a lot of times, no, own up to your own calling, own up to your own leadership, own up to your, who you are. But for the brother Nit and others, sister V and, you know, sister C, they're still too young. So eventually, maybe 10 years from now, I, when I do lecture again, I'll tell you what happened with that. The critical question, which I'll be start addressing next lecture, I guess it will be still a uh, central piece then, lecture five, but I'm gonna ask the following question. Did Kapjil take place between Robert and Bopa, right? I told you over and over again, and, and this is something that I need to review because uh, some people who's taking this class for the first time will never know what Kapjil is. So I need to do a brief review of Kap what Kapjil is because I told you problem is not with Kap and her relationship. It's when you start Kapjil patronizing. Okay, when the tipping point, when cop takes more profit, cop takes more, you know, get from the, he gives so little and then get, 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 but then he's patronizing. You have too much power. You start telling your ur how you need to become. And, you know, you need to be a pastor. You need to be a pastor. No, they got to call them to be a pastor. The problem with cop, when you have that ultimate power, then you're going to tell your children who to become, what to do. You know, so it's a Korean period. You should be a doctor, 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 lawyer, lawyer, lawyer. There are 32,000 kinds of jobs in America, 20,000 types of jobs in America. Korean parents narrowed down to four. Doctor, lawyer, engineer, business, that's it. That's called cop gym, right? So I'm asking the question, me as a cop, not God, me as a cop, did I engage in cop gym? Okay. So that will be the question that I'll be asking and I'll be asking you that question. What about you? What about you in your ministry, right? And if you have a question, please uh, write to us, write to me through email, oikosbishop at mac.com, right? Oikosbishop at mac.com. When you click out of this YouTube, it's in the information section. Uh, email me and just indicate on lecture number four, these are my questions. So when we meet face to face, either by Zoom or by in person, I'll address your questions. I hope it was profitable. Yeah. So yeah, my hour lecture, it's about 50 minutes because I'm giving you a 10 minute break. <laughs> so you could uh, spend some time meditating, thinking about it. All right. I'll see you guys on next lecture, lecture number five. I'll be addressing uh, on the whole issue on capture, reviewing of what capture is, and then I'm going to ask myself, did I really play? Did, was, is there instances in where I actually, my uh, experience as a capture? And is there any other uh, experience in mission field in Cambodia of capture? Okay, see you later. <laughs>